the end of gas boilers. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video I'm going to go through my renewable journey. So we're going to install a air source heat pump in this video today. We're going to go through the installation step by step, show you all the ins and outs of it, talk about heat losses, try and answer some of the questions from what people have asked as well about heat pumps. Do you think it's the end of gas boilers? Do you think we're going to go to hydrogen boilers? Do you think we're going to go to air source heat pumps? Well, I'm going to put this air source heat pump in my house and I'm going to try this and I'll give you my honest opinion on this heat pump. I'll tell you how much it costs to run. And yeah, we'll just I'll just give you honest my honest feedback from it. So if you can put a thumbs up on the video, really appreciate that. And also if you can put some comments below, as always, again, that helps with the video. So yeah, let's get into this video. We've got Mike from the Big Green Beard and he's just putting the bracket on the wall for the indoor control unit. So he's gonna put that onto the wall and then once this is on the wall, so it's, as you can see, it's nice and easy to install onto the wall. Once this is on the wall, it's going to be piped up. So what's inside there then? Um, so underneath this covers all the electrical connections. I'll show you there. Oh, wow. So these little guys here are all your sensor cables. So with this kit, there's no need to um, actually have to wire them in. See, they're just labelled plugs and they correspond to sensors out the sensor pack. So we've got system flow, system return temperature, so you can set your deltas upright. Um, obviously, a hot water cylinder temperature um, and then a couple, of, a couple of others. Oh, wow. There ain't, there ain't much to unplug if you want to lift it out of the way. So that's the three kilowatt backup heater. Obviously, that's where the... Uh, pressure gauge will link on and PRV. So what that that's like an immersion heater then, if it needed it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. So it can either use it to do the uh, Legionella cycle once a week, or you can use it actually as a an emergency backup, or you can use it um, to supplement the power from the heat pump. And what, can we have a look at that diverter as well? Of course you can, yeah. So how does that, is that just like a normal three-way valve? It's just normal three-way valve with an actuator on it, yeah. So that's something that could fail in future that might need to, might might need some maintenance. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something to keep your eye on in the maintenance, but it's all it's all covered under ten-year warranty anyway. And then we've got a big pump as well. There. That's a massive pump, isn't it? Yeah, plenty of flow rate. Twenty-five, eighty-five. Yeah, nice one. Thank you, you very much. No worries. Yeah, you see, Darren always on the phone. You're on the phone again, Darren. <laughs> Gotta keep the customers happy, Al. What we got there then? What are them valves? Anti frost valves, mate. So what are they for? I know what they're for really, but what, do you want to tell people what they're for? So if you, if you, because you're not having glycol in your system, you've got no frost and anti-frost protection. So these valves, if the water inside gets to three degrees, it'll just allow the water out so that you won't, if you do have a pipe burst, it won't go everywhere. So we've got pipes through wall for the air source heat pump and they just go up and across the ceiling and then they go over to the indoor control unit and they're connected via a Lola setter so that's an AMI Lola setter. And Darren's just doing all the wiring on this. This is actually quite easy because it's all labelled. It's a lot easier than what I would have expected, to be honest. And then the sensors have all got plugs on. So they just click in easy and they're all coded, um, all labelled, should I say. 
and the hot water is going through a plate heat exchanger into the mixergy cylinder which we'll have a look at a bit we'll have a look at that a bit more um, later on this has actually been a lot easier than i expected um, what i'm going to do now we'll have a look around it's actually it's actually started to rain um, but we'll have a look around and i'll answer some of the questions that people's asked as well there's still a few things to finish off there's a bit of wiring to do we're going to sort out these wires above here also into the mixer cylinder we've just got to sort wires out on this as well we've disconnected the gas boiler from this so we've got the unit on the wall here in fact what i'll do is i'll go outside and i'll start with the air source heat pump and then we'll come back in and i'll show you how all pipe work go on this so we've got the air source heat pump here and it's just on temporary feet at the minute as you can see we're going to be getting this drive done so it's just on temporary feet at the moment and it's the harney tech air source heat pump we've got the connections out of the back of it these are flexible connections on here i still need to just finish this off and finish off the the lagging if we have a look at the lagging we can see it's very nice this is the condensate pro stuff uh, primary pro i think it's called but this is a special lagging for air source heat pumps so that you don't get i don't know if you've seen them when they're all cable ties on and stuff like that so what i'm going to do uh, because i've got ocd i'm probably going to paint these as well so they don't stand out as much so you've got your flow and return there that's going in into the house this bit here there's a little bit of copper pipe and then you've got your anti-frost valves on there and they're just to protect the heat pump in winter for freezing up and then we've got yeah, uh, heat pump isolator outside as well so as I say this here this I might even put it on wall I've got a wall bracket um, so we'll see we'll see I haven't decided um, but yeah so let's have a look inside so as we go inside on this again you've got your floor returns there drain off on bottom you've got your pipes going up and then over goes blurred when I do that you've got your floor floor valve there we've got a pump there for system so that that pump there is going in that direction into the system and that's going into the central heating and then you get your IMI I am my header there so this is the flow here from the air source heat pump and that's going round going into there so it's going inside this control box and when we looked at this earlier that's got that diverter valve and then that decides whether it's going to do the hot water or it's going to do central heating if it does hot water it goes down this pipe here down there round and it goes into this plate heat exchanger on the mixager cylinder and then the mixager cylinder's got another little pump that pumps it and that pumps it around the cylinder so you're not mixing the central heating water with the water from the central heating uh, with the water from the cylinder sorry and then that's the return you've got your expansion vessel on there we've got a combined return there so your hot water is your last return it's your last tea into eating and then that pipe there then goes up and across there down and then again that goes back out to the air source heat pump unit when we have a look on here it tells you all your readings so at the minute inside it's 23.2 don't know if you can see that on video might be a bit awkward to see and then it's 18.3 outside and then hot water it's showing 65 uh, 63 degrees um yeah sorry hot water's there 
and you can go there's there's lots of details in this so on this you can go into here and it tells you temperatures at different sensors so then you can work out your delta t and you can set it all up and it say that it's set to 25 so this is on the weather comp so if we had it turned on it's not actually turned on at the minute i've turned the heating part of it off but this there's a lot of information in here might be a bit hard to see on the uh, on the video but you can see it's got all charts on there so that's really really good so one of the questions that's been asked quite a lot is is it noisy so what we'll do now i'm going to put the hot water on um and we'll see how noisy it is and you can you can see what you think so we'll just go to mix your cylinder here and just override it for now temporary and then but if you can hear it on here it's just set up, started up so that's changed the temperature there and that's moved that diverter valve inside there so water will start coming around this pipe here that's actually already starting to get warm But what we'll do, we'll go outside and we'll see what and how noisy the fan is, or the air source heat pump unit is. So that's it running now, um, full on hot water. Obviously it's, I don't know if you can hear, it's really, really quiet. Really, really quiet. Can it, uh, birds in background, but that's about it really, to be honest. Let me know what you think. Do you think that's noisy? And that's full speed now. It's hard to show because the it shows it's slow, like a, like an helicopter, but that's actually spinning really, really quickly. I put it right to it. But as I say, it's it's not noisy that at all really and the good thing for us now is I don't know if you can see on these batteries these batteries are full so as batteries are full and as solar panels we're producing 3.6 3.7 kilowatts so what that means is the actual the hot waters we we it's heating up with the sun at the moment Obviously, I know a lot of people say, well, it's not free because you spent a lot of money. And yeah, I've spent a lot of money. Um, hopefully, my journey with this will help others decide what you're going to buy and what you're not going to buy. One thing I point out on this video, which is not really relevant to an SRC heat pump, but on these batteries, with that inverter there, you can only draw three kilowatts out of the batteries so for instance if you were trying to draw six kilowatts and your batteries were full for instance you'd only better take three kilowatts out of the batteries and then you'd be drawing three kilowatts from the grid which is a little bit disappointing but it's just some something for you to be aware of and if you're going to get if you're going to have batteries installed just see if that's what you want and see if that's suitable for you it may be that you want to have two of these um, inverters and then have your batteries um, one inverter for each battery because if you did do that then you'd better draw six kilowatts out and you'd better put six kilowatts in so but obviously it starts getting even more expensive then so one of the questions asked was radiator sizing have you had to update all your radiators in your house have you had to fit big massive radiators to get your flow temperatures well we've done a full heat loss on this property and i've also we started running the boiler and um, the gas boiler i started running that at 35 degrees just to see um see if radiators if rooms were getting warm and to be honest with you um it showed that one maybe two radiators could do with updating in the in the full house what you've got to bear in mind is a lot of the time 
rate it as oversized for the for the properties so it may be that you don't have to um, change all your radiators like some people are saying or are thinking um, it may be that you do but that's why it's it really important that you have um, a proper heat loss done and if you have that heat loss done then you'll know whether or not you do need to i'm going to actually run my system now through the winter and i'm not going to change any radiators um, and i'm going to see what happens we do know that one of the radiators the one in the kitchen even with a gas boiler at full temperature that was too small it's undersized but there's not a lot of space for that so that might be one where we do put like a triple radiator in in there in future but as time goes on if we get, if we get any spare money um big if then hopefully we might do kitchen at some point and if we do kitchen then we'll redesign that and we'll put a bigger radiator in anyway we're getting nearly four kilowatts on solar at the minute and as i say that's just feeding that's just feeding air source heat pump i hope this video has been of some use if you've got any questions please put me comments below and i'll try my best to answer them the best i can i'd like to thank mike from the big green beard mike's been here helped us and supported us doing this also michael from the national gas center for excellence obviously i've just done my training there uh, and I'm, uh, I've been working with Michael, doing some bits and bats there now. So I've been doing some videos at National Gas Centre for Excellence. They also do a heat pump course there. So if anybody wants to go do your level three heat heat pump for heat pumps, then you know give them a call and get yourself booked in. Also, Darren, my old mucker, Darren. Um, yeah, thanks, thank you to Darren for coming and doing electrics. On um, he actually. Uh, he came on a Sunday, uh, no sorry, he came on Saturday to do electrics and he's coming back on Sunday, next Sunday, to do some more electrics for me. So, thank you to Darren for that. So the jury's out with air source heat pumps. I actually think that this is going to be really, really good for us because for maybe about eight or nine months of the year, we'll have hardly any energy bills. We won't need to use the gas anymore and obviously the electricity is going to be covered by the solar panels so put some comments below <laughs> noisy motorbike going past put some comments below let me know what you think to what what i've done here um if you've got any questions if you want me to do any videos on anything to do with this then yeah just give us a shout i'll try and do what I can um, and I'll answer any questions I can and I'll do that honestly as well so I'm not here to try and talk people into having air source heat pumps or not we did do the heat loss on this property and on the heat loss it actually said that um, an air source heat pump would be cheaper to run than gas and it were only it were only a slight difference um, I think it was about £200 difference, but obviously if I'm not paying for um, if I'm not paying for the electricity, then for me it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. So and I'm babbling on again. Uh, um, yeah, as I say, put some comments below. Let me know what you think. Um, do you think they're noisy? Um, yeah, just let me know. Thanks for watching.